I was not prepared for how hooked I am now on snow geese hunt. I mean, I love deer hunting. I love pheasant hunting. Yep. Those are those are my jams, but this was unbelievable. Oh, you got her, dude. She's down. Let's go. Dude, I just shot a deer of a lifetime. Freaking smoked him. One with nature, and if you're a believer, one with God. Definitely gets your heart pumping. Boy, you are in trouble. Follow Obsession Podcast. All right, everybody, welcome back to another Fall Obsession Podcast episode driven by Ridge Rock Hunt Company. Proud partners over there. We'll talk about them at the end in our sponsor segment. I'm Sam with Fall Obsession, your podcast host. Appreciate you guys joining me for another Monday morning episode on here. I'm excited for this episode, first off. Um, excited for the hunt that we're going to talk about. I'm on here with a really, really fun crew. Only half of the fun crew, really, unfortunately. Um, first off, uh, first time on the podcast, our pro staffer and Midwestern regional staff coordinator, Todd Sellen. Welcome, Todd, to Fall Obsession Podcast. Hey, thanks for having me, and excited to be here. So Awesome. Yeah, we're happy to have you. We got uh, Todd's wife, also a Fall Obsession staffer, Heather Sellen. Welcome, Heather. Thank you. And one of the funniest guys you'll ever meet, he's back on the podcast, been a while, Andy Meeks. Welcome back, buddy. Uh, it's always an honor. Welcome. I'm glad to be back, so thank you. Glad to have you. So guys, we're here to talk about a, a Missouri snow goose hunt that you guys were recently a part of. Tyler and Delaney were also a part of this crew that went on this hunt, uh, I, I guess around a couple weeks ago, going on a couple weeks at this point. Yeah. Um, really wanted to have them on here with us. Six people on one podcast is just a little a little hectic. Kind of in the past four has seemed to be a, a good conversation in our max. So uh, when, when we planned this episode for our listeners, when we planned this, I was talking to Todd, and we decided to do uh, two parts. This one being part one, and then the episode directly after this one will be part two. Todd and I are going to sit down with Delaney and Tyler and get them on here as well and uh, give them the opportunity to share some of their experiences and, and that kind of stuff. But for now, we got this crew. It's going to be a fun time. Looking forward to this conversation. But um, Todd, I'm going to hand it to you to kind of kick things off. If you want to tell us just a little bit about um, what this hunt was meant to be and how it came to be. Um, just sure. as in, you know, what, what the, what the idea was behind this event. So. Sure. So it really started over a year ago. Um, Andy and I were out in Colorado on a pheasant hunt that was hosted by Tim Burgess. And we happened to be hanging out one night after a hunt in his grandparents' basement. And Andy just looked at me and said, Hey, you ever snow goose hunt before? I said, Nope, I've never snow goose hunted before. And so he started explaining what snow goose hunting was about. And it, uh, the more he got into it, the more detail he gave, it really started to pique my interest a little bit. So um, when I went home a day or two later, I said to Heather, first of all, listen, you, you got to meet fall obsession staffers in person. You absolutely have to, because um, we communicate all the time electronically, but you know, we don't have very many opportunities to actually get together in person. And it's totally different once you, you know, get to meet the people in person. So, um, with that being said, um, I had this vision of what can we do? And I actually called you, Sam, about it. Well, how can we get more people involved to meet in person versus, versus uh, you know, electronically? And so with that thought, I came up with this vision of why don't we look into snow goose hunting, come up with a snow goose hunt and try to get a bunch of staffers together just to hang out and enjoy each other's company and then be able to, go, you know, get after some snow geese at the same time. Um, and so I started uh, doing some research and one, one of the first, uh, first outfitters that really uh, grabbed my attention was Squaw Creek Hunt Club out of, um, out of uh, Mountain City, Missouri there. And um, so I contacted the, the owner and he, he explained what the details were with the hunts and what to expect and so on and so forth. And, it, you know, really, it really, um, like I said, got me excited about trying this and trying to get a group of people together. Um, so he gave me some dates and the first date that he gave us actually fell within an off time for Heather and I, we're both teachers. And so it's hard for us just to take time off in the middle of a year 
we have to be creative and look at the times that we do have off that are built into our calendar. Yeah. And so yep. the first time that he had available was during a midwinter break. It was perfect. That's perfect. But the kicker was it was only like three weeks away. So I didn't know if we had enough time to get the word out and get enough staffers on board on such short notice, so on and so forth. Um, so um, we are able to uh, get a couple staffers on, but um, about a week before we were supposed to go, a polar, polar vortex came down from Canada and swept through the Midwest. So um, make a long story short, uh, the owner, Scott Croner, he called me and said, listen, guys, uh, which, which, you know, I, I, I like how honest Scott was. I, you know, he was just, uh, you know, he, he, he spoke volumes about his character when he called us and said, listen, guys, I could take your money. Um, but here's what you're going to experience. You're going to go out, you're going to freeze your tails off, and you're going to stare in an empty sky because all the geese went back down south. He goes, yeah, I can certainly take your money if you want, but know that you're going to have that. He goes, so let's look at rescheduling. So that's what we did. Uh, the next time we rescheduled was Thanksgiving. Um, we all had some things come up that yeah, were totally out of our control. Yeah, totally out of our control. And again, I called Scott and said, listen, you know, I know, I understand you're running a business. You're trying to make money and we've canceled on you a couple of times. So I understand if you just take our deposit and say, tough luck, you know, um, but he wasn't, he, he said, no, no, no. We understand that life happens. Let's, let's look at it at the spring hunt. So uh, we were able to get a hold of him again after Christmas. We were able to book some dates. We got a hold of Andy he was part of the crew. We had a, a couple other people that were involved at the time and we worked out a date and um, you know, the vision I had over a year ago about getting a group of people uh, together to go after snow geese really came to fruition and man it was an amazing time it was so much fun like i said we laughed nonstop for the entire weekend and really the the icing on the cake was being able to harvest some snow geese awesome and i mean that that's how you want a hunting camp to be man you, you want it to be fun you want it to be enjoyable it's not just about about the killing or anything it's about it's about the experience and the people you're with for sure mm -hmm. exactly uh, and so andy i have a question for you because yes. todd mentioned that you put this bug in his ear about a snow goose hunt back in colorado what, what was that january of 20 todd or 21 21 okay yeah yeah it would yeah, be 21 yeah yes yeah. yeah. so over a year ago andy why snow geese what what is the difference and, and i'll preface that with i am i'm from texas i am not a waterfowl guy i've done very little waterfowl hunting in my life so why snow geese versus just regular goose hunting versus duck hunting all the different opportunities why snow geese well uh the, well the, the, the spring hunt the conservation season okay um the, it's um they open it up for very liberal limits and uh, no plugs in the gun. So you don't, you can shells in your shotgun as possible. So it's kind of a fun little time. We're trying to help the flock, um, you know, just take as much, much out as possible to, to, to help the welfare of the geese. And, you know, it's, uh, you know, we can, it's fun to lay in, sit in the blind and have a good time and laugh. And it's, yeah, it's, um, it's, it's a time that, not many people get to understand and uh, enjoy. It's it's a good time. It's different than any waterfall hunting that I've done. It's different than Canadian goose hunting. It's different than duck hunting. Um, you're not the shoot limits. You're out there to have a good time and help the flock or the, the the population of the snow goose decrease a little bit. Obviously, we can't do much because of you know there's, there's not enough of us out there harvesting these things. So right, yeah. awesome. We've, we we found the safest snow geese are the ones coming right at Andy's head because yeah, he, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so. Gary, I mean, seriously, I, I, I hit the deck. I plugged my ears and hit the deck and said, someone shoot this thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that sounds like, uh, sounds like we got some awesome stories from, from the weekend. So let's, let's dive in and, and hear just a little bit about, what you guys experienced over the few days that y'all were there and and what it was like andy you go first so, or todd you go first i, I don't care <laughs> <laughs> well i just i just want to say going back to what todd said about um when he came home and was like you need to go on this um and you need to meet people yes um we've been doing you know zoom calls there's emails there's there's social media but you can't disregard the importance of the 
of building relationships face to face. And for me, I mean, there were some other things that came up, obviously, but that was for me, one of the most exciting things was, you know, I have a bunch of new bunch of new friends who, if I ever got if something ever happened to Todd that we were talking about this earlier, you know, my connection with hunting is very intertwined with him. And if something heaven forbid happened to him, I don't know how much I would hunt um, by myself on our property. But I know I could call any of these guys in a heartbeat and say, Hey, we go out hunting with me. Can I fly out there and go hunting? And they would in, you know, Delaney, Andy, Tyler um, would drop anything and say, yep, come on, let's go, let's get out in the woods. And to me, that, that was a really cool experience that I now have these really close friends. Um, and I, I really wasn't expecting it to, to bond with these guys as quickly and as well as we did. It was unbelievable. Yeah. And she did just up my life insurance. So I was trying to figure out. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. She wasn't planning on you coming back from that snow goose hunt is what it sounds like. No, and I do, have to, I do have to agree with what Heather said. Uh, you know, there, I mean, I met Todd before on Colorado, but there is something to say. To meeting our staffers together i mean i met sam i met you sam i met nick down in texas mm-hmm. stuff like that and and uh, chester i mean uh, i mean you know, and, and, you know obviously i'm with drew and stuff like that but you know just what heather said we just kind of clicked so fast it was so nice it was mm-hmm. like it was we had conversations that we you know most people within 12 hours wouldn't have with each other. <laughs> yeah <laughs> man i i want to talk about that just briefly and especially yeah. it, us having a conversation here but if there are any new or unfamiliar listeners with what our staff program is and everything um you know we have over or i say over it's almost three dozen now um staff members of different capacities across the country and one thing i'm really proud of and i honestly I, i don't take any credit for it because you guys are the ones who have done all the work yourselves and built the bond but it it, it's not just a staff program for a hunting company you know where you're just a number in a system or that's what you feel like it's Mm -hmm. it's an actual family and an opportunity yeah and opportunities like this are 100 percent how you build that bond and strengthen that bond as you all have already alluded to I, i can speak to the really the first true staff hunt we had down in texas a few years ago andy was there um, and, and, and I'll, I'll, you know, obviously I wish I was there with you guys on this one. I second everything else say though, with just clicking with people right out of the gate. Cause we had 10 guys in that camp, some fall obsession staff members, a, a couple that weren't. And it was just, uh, I mean, it, we clicked and I'll, I'll tell this about Andy too, cause, <laughs> yeah. cause that staff hunt was technically before Andy joined our staff. That- was oh, not yeah. on staff but... yeah he he was he was a guest and i remember drew texted me and was like hey can i bring my buddy and i was like i guess so <laughs> we got a spot I, I guess you can if you want to if he wants to buy a texas hunting license he can come down and i remember we were waiting on chris the guy who was uh helping us get uh set up there and and kind of run us around everything the first couple days we were waiting on him to show up we were I don't know, an hour or so early. And we're literally just parked on the side of the road. Like I, I, Drew was there and then I pulled up and we're literally parked on the side of the road waiting for him to come with, and punch in the gate code and everything. And Andy gets out and I, I, I didn't even know his last name. Like I, I just, I just knew it was Drew's buddy, Andy. That's all I knew. And from the first second he opened his mouth, it was like, we'd known each other for our entire lives. Like, exactly. it's just, I don't know what it is about hunting camp, man, but, but oh. it is a special, special place. It truly is. And that is. was exactly it. You know, Andy and I have met before. I mean, when we saw each other, we're like, ah, oh, big hug. Like, I had to separate us. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> middle of the highway, big hug. Middle of the highway, yeah, right in the middle of the road. And there's cars coming at us. We were hugging it. Up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but even even meeting Tyler and Delaney for the first time, it was hugs all around. It's like we've known each other forever, our entire lives. Yeah. You know? So, and we just clicked. Like you said, we just clicked from the very get go. And, and you know, just like when we were in in Colorado, Andy, same thing with with um, with Tim, and same thing with Drew. It's, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was great to hang out with Tim. Tim. Tim was great too. I mean, yes. Mm-hmm. It's just nice to meet 
meet everybody. I mean, and Heather, I'm so glad to get to meet you. I mean, it was just, you, you fit right in with us. I don't know how you did that, but. <laughs> Been married to Todd for too long. <laughs> He's callous. <laughs> no, it, 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 nothing. It, it's like we never missed a beat. It was just like, yeah. it, it, it's like we known each other for five, six years. I mean, it, it was mm -hmm. incredible. So uh, that's awesome. In terms of the goose hunt, what what really attracted me was just the sheer numbers. You had asked Andy about what what attracts him to do hunting, snow goose yeah. hunting. Just the sheer numbers. Oh my goodness! Mm -hmm. It was you know you're seeing hundreds of thousands a day. You know. You guys, um, what's that? Did you guys saw the hundred thousand? I mean miles of geese. I mean miles of geese. Wow. The last day that we were packing up, we got back to the lodge and we stood there for I don't know 15, 20 minutes watching snow geese fly by in packs of thousands for as far as you could see holy cow and it, went on. We, it went on you couldn't i mean they just went on and on and on and so um we we packed our vehicles up hour or more later they were still coming and they were still stretched out and it was just crazy you know there's probably over a million geese that we had seen just oh, packing yeah. the vehicles so you can you can see the pictures and the videos of snow geese on the lake but to actually witness like a lake that is white and you yeah. can see it moving or you can see the tornado of the snow geese um which we got to see a little ways away from yeah. us it there's no video no picture that takes the place of being there watching it in person it was absolutely unbelievable the sheer numbers of um, of the snow geese that were there. And I didn't even understand the whole conservation um, point of it really until Andy filled us in on all of that and how important that piece is to hunting and why we do have that conservation period and what they're doing up north. Um, so it was, I was blown away by the numbers. Wow. Your numbers, I mean, you, you nailed the, yeah, you nailed it right there. I mean, just that told the complete hundred thousands of geese that we saw over three days incredible so, yeah. so andy had talked to us a little bit he was our resident expert he had done it before heather and i have, have never snow goose hunt before so he was talking to us one one day in the in the blind uh during one of our uh down periods it was just explaining the conservation piece to it and about mm -hmm. the fact that these sheer numbers because they're all migrating up to canada there are so many of them they're destroying the tundra Mm -hmm. So they're losing yep. their breeding ground. They're losing their feeding ground. They're just dying off from starvation and, wow. and so on and so forth because there's so many of them. And, and that's absolutely and – you, and you, it's hard to believe until you actually see it. And it's like, oh, my goodness. I never right. knew this actually existed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And exactly. I mean, and, and the, the tundra is a very sensitive ecosystem, 100%. Mm -hmm. It gets sunlight and dying very little. So uh, one uh, – if you guys want to ever – look at something that uh, Planet Earth has a, a video on, um, the, you know, the show Planet Earth. They do a kind of a little, thing, a little short skit on snow geese. You should look it up. It's, uh, yeah. They actually have a fence around a certain area that shows what the tundra should be at and shows what the tundra is at. So, I mean, we're not doing this just to, you know, have a good time and shoot these geese. I mean, we are, but, you know, we're kind of helping them out too at the same time. We're, it's, it's population control. It's just like with anything, deer deer control and mm -hmm. I mean, you know we're all conservationists at the same point mm -hmm. so yeah and that's one point i want to make to this i mean you see big piles of birds but you know what yeah that's big piles of birds but we're also donating that meat to food shelves and yeah. we are doing other things with that i mean it's not we're not wasting it and right. that's mm -hmm. one big point that i want to make too is that you know as much as fun as you know, pile pitchers are and having a good time in there we're also helping, you know, the ecosystem out in the tundra and also these geese. So, and and Joe, our guide, was explaining when he came in and sat down with us at the kitchen table about how the avian flu, the bird flu, exactly uh, got, mm -hmm. got into the goose population as well. And so they had found a pile of about ten thousand snow geese that were dead from the snow from the avian flu. So that's another part of it. You know, if you get sick birds, we actually did have one bird that was flying really weird. Um, really that we were able to harvest and we assume that it, that those were side effects from the from the avian flu so and, and, ask, tyler, yeah. and ask tyler me and tyler i me and tyler were in the, uh, the end of the pit line and i was having a conversation I'm like that bird's not right and he goes yeah that bird's not flying right i mean uh, tyler tyler saw it too so we all saw it yeah yeah, yeah. 
man the the, the conservation side of, of all of this and that I, I feel like we could talk about the importance of conservation not just with birds but with anything that and that, right, that's right. an episode in and of yeah. itself but you you're 100 percent correct that hunters are the the biggest conservationists out of anybody anywhere and you know hate on them all you want but the, the, yeah. this hunters are the reason that these animals like this or animals that have been in danger whatever end of the spectrum it might be it's the reason that they're still here so it's the reason that they're managed that's so that that's another conversation for another time i feel like but sure um, and then you look at the hunting side of it geez the adrenaline rush oh know, yeah our morning hunt you know we had a few we had quite a few volleys i think we ended up with uh two ge- geese in the morning and we missed we missed probably three or four other ones, so we could have had a, a nice it, little handful. I think we had three. Uh, did we have three geese in the morning? I think we had three geese in the morning. We had three. We had three. Yeah. Um, but, the, but, but then the evening, go on, Todd. Geez, the, the flight path in the morning was way off, and so it was kind of off in the distance, and we had a few that would break off and come to us. But in the evening, flight path was directly over us. Was. And it was, okay, pop up, boom, 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 empty your gun, then you sit oh. down and hurry up and reload. So it was just one right after another. Geez, we ended up going through what three boxes of shells within a you know 20 to 30 minute period oh my word it was insane yeah it was crazy mm-hmm. it, and, and, that, and that's the fun thing about this that, that you know the snow goose hunt is you get to do that i mean there's low times just like with deer hunting or, or you have these down times but when the action's hot i mean it's hot you know it, and that's what keeps people bringing coming back it's like golf you play golf you know last shot your best shot brings you back <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. A, I'm not a golfer. I spend too much money on bow hunting. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> miniature golfer. <laughs> yeah, putt putt. So, Andy, real quick, I'll, I'll I'll ask you this question since you out of this group, you probably have the most experience with with goose hunting and and all that kind of stuff. Is there a major behavioral difference between snow geese and just what normal people would think of like a, a Canadian? Oh, yes, 100%, yes. How so? Um, he, um, well, snow geese fly in mass numbers. Um, you know, it could range from a dozen to a thousand, I mean, even 10,000. I mean, they, they, they fly in big flocks. And that's their defense mechanism, I guess. Um, they, you know, there's, there's, a lot, there's a lot of eyes there, okay? And these birds that we hunt, right, you know, snow geese are very worrisome. I mean, they are very picky of where they land. And what they do, I mean, you get some, you know, not very smart ones, which is okay. We call them, you know, the, the younger generation, the jubies. <laughs> um, but you get the older, the older generations that's been around, been flying the flyway from Canada to, you know, down by you for 15 years. I mean, that's that's a lot of miles. They've seen everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I mean, these are these are very intelligent birds compared to honkers. Big Canadian, giant Canadian geese, I guess. I'm not, uh, we don't get too many lessers up this way. Um, but, uh, you know, lessers, they're kind of a similar way of snow geese. They come in big flocks. And spec, specks are white front geese, speckle bellies. You guys saw the speckle bellies. We had an amazing show with the speckle bellies. Mm-hmm. And um, they do mass numbers too. That's kind of their defense, you know, large groups. And honkers, I mean, you, you, honkers, they do the same thing in the fall, but, you know, it's a little bit slower pace. They're bigger, they're stronger, they kind of can hold their own ground. But, um, yes, there's a very difference between behaviors of different geese, yes. Awesome. Even ducks, too. Oh, yeah, well, for sure. To Andy's, Andy's point, we first got out in the blind Saturday morning, and it was there's frost on the ground, and so there were frost on decoys on the decoys as well. And with the sun coming up, the decoys were pretty sparkly with that frost on it. Shine, Andy, shine's not good. Shine's not good. Yeah, Andy kept saying that they're going to be a little more weary because the the sparkle coming off of the um, off the decoys, and so and even in the evening we were getting so many. But at first it seemed like they were coming into us where we'd have a volley, and something weird was happening. We couldn't figure out what was going on. We get a couple of geese that would break off and come down to us, and exactly. they were just on the edge of shooting range, and awesome, boop, they peel off and go. And so yeah. It, 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 it was weird because I'm like, well, that, it, nothing has changed from the morning, and I don't understand this, you know. And shadowing, I mean, different shadows. I mean, when the sun goes down, a different part, you know, obviously it goes sets in the west, and <laughs> shadowing a, a pop of boys, and some doesn't like it. Or you got it, it's it's a weird game. Snow geese are very touchy. It's uh, 
it's a very frustrating hunt. I'll tell you that. I mean, you can you can shoot zero for six days in a row, and then you can shoot a hundred for a day, and then that makes your season. So, hmm. wow, that's crazy. I have not shot a hundred yet. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody would do it, it'd be you. I'm sure. Mm-hmm. I, oh, no doubt. Yeah. No, I got. Uh, yeah, next. Uh, not this weekend. I got to stay home and uh, do house house things and then next weekend i go up to north dakota i'll set my own spread so i'll be hunting uh, next weekend for some piece so. awesome. tell them about how long that spread takes to set up yeah because <laughs> we, we were talking about that in the in the in the lodge and, and you know originally they had told me that everything will be in the blind we just set it up and we're go we're, we're good to go because it's a it was a self-guided um but when the guide came in he said no i got everything set up for you and andy said something like uh, yeah, we did. That was his reaction. <laughs> that was exactly <laughs> I was so pumped. I was so pumped. I'm like, oh, we get to sleep in. Thank you. <laughs> no, but see, like that. But last weekend, so it, uh, it was kind of a buddy hunt. There's, uh, I got a four buddy or snow goose guides, and it was a uh, full body set. So we had some full bodies down there, but it's mostly socks. Um, but just to put it in spirit perspective, we set. 250 full body snow geese and there was eight of us and it took us two hours oh my word so and, and we, we had 1800 we had out for ours 1800 yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah oh my word yeah. they said they said the minimum was 1500 and they run 18 yep well yeah i'd hope that they already had that set yeah. up holy so, cow Right, and they and they had a variation of the different types of decoys. They had the socks, they had the ones that moved with the wind, and they had the the whole bodies and the yeah, whole yeah. bodies. Yeah, so they had a variation, and then and then we had the e collar going pretty much all day. And like Andy said, you'll go to bed tonight, and you'll still hear it in your sleep. And <laughs> I'm still, We're hear- still hearing it. <laughs> You're still hearing. <laughs> no, it no, it's it's an amazing time. It just like like uh, you know, just get everybody together, just have a good time, eat dinner, you know, mm-hmm. just yeah. have a couple. Tells the other it's, it's a ball. Yeah. The other thing that really amazed amazed us, Heather and I were talking about it, is you know we we came together as a group and everybody just assumed a role without saying, okay, family meeting time, everybody at the table, mm-hmm. let's figure out who's going to do what. Everybody just fell into a role naturally. Yeah. And it just it just, we just gelled and we just meshed so well and everything just worked out so perfectly. Yeah. That's awesome. Oh. Mm-hmm. So Todd and Heather, this was y'all's first time snow goose hunting Mm -hmm. when y'all are on your way up there for this trip or when when it's finally coming together you know it's finally about to happen everything we work for what what were y'all's thoughts going into this having never done it before so my first thought was and i said this to heather several times you know weeks before it's coming together it's coming together it's finally Mm -hmm. coming together and then when things are happening um so easily because like i said everything just flowed you kind of okay. Where's the yeah, but where's the where's the some the obstacle that comes in that's going to happen? Where it never happened. So <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean. And so um, um, my thought was I couldn't believe how easy it was to put together. We got enough staff. Mm-hmm. The vision I had of getting staff together and enjoying each other's company and going after snow geese really uh, really came true. And we we're just I was just so excited to be able to go on this goose hunt. In terms of the goose hunt itself my 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 expectation was just to hang out and blind with these guys and and have a good time and if we got five geese on the ground one per person that would be perfect that would have made my whole weekend um turns out we got 15 so three per person so we we certainly exceeded all of our expectations and um you know like i said we're able to really connect at a level that you really can't when you're when you're visiting with each other electronically so right I, and I know for me, I don't usually get to go on the hunts because normally mm-hmm. both of us with having, you know, two young kids, both of us can't be gone. It's real, especially during the school year. Um, how do we how do we work it where someone's watching our kids or managing the farm while we're gone? Um, so for me, just being able to figure it out and be able to go on the hunt was a huge deal for me. Having it fall in a time where we're waiting for spring break to hit. Um, I have a, you know, a little bit of a downtime from coaching between basketball and track. Um, and just being able to, to get away, meet some new people, get some geese on the ground. Um, 
I couldn't have asked for a better experience. And, and to be honest, even if we hadn't got any geese on the ground, we had so much fun that there was no doubt this was going to be an annual event. Right. Yeah. Um, I was not prepared for how hooked I am now on snow geese hunting. I mean, I love deer hunting. I love pheasant hunting. Yep. Those are, those are my jams, but this was unbelievable. And Andy said, you have the downtimes, but you don't have to be as silent. You can have great conversations. Oh, yeah. Um, And then it's not for just like one shot for a deer or maybe on a really amazing deer hunt, you get two two shots. Um, It's just multiple times or potential for multiple times of some really rapid fire and and great action. Um, And you never knew. I think you said it, you know, Andy you know, 10 minutes can completely change the, the hunt. And that's how it was yeah. that the Sunday morning when we were out, we just, I mean, we, we were seeing stuff, but not much. And then all of a sudden we had some come in and we put some on the ground and we were happy. Drake mm-hmm. got to go get them out of the pond. Oh, and yeah. by the way, that's an awesome dog, Andy. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, he made a cameo. Drake he, did a phenomenal he, job bringing the, the <laughs> geese in for us. Um, so yeah, it was just, his voice that's why <laughs> Drake's such a good boy um but yeah it was just getting together um and, and like i said being able to put some geese on the ground was unbelievable awesome. so a couple other impressions i had was that it, it, it was similar to deer hunting in that majority of the activity is early in the morning or in the after in, mm-hmm. in the evening exactly. but it wasn't like deer hunting in that you don't have to worry about scent control uh you have mm-hmm. to worry about you know your your concealment a little bit but not not a not as much as deer hunting um you don't have to worry about how much noise you make you know what i mean we're, we're having just regular conversations like this in the yep. line at least we're flying over our head and they, it didn't seem to bother them at all so that was fun andy did mention something about this is this was your first time hunting with with women right yes I, 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 yes was my first time hunting with uh females yes and it was great opportunity. Yeah, awesome I mean, Heather made the trip, by the way. I just, yeah. And Delaney, <laughs> Delaney, I, I'm not putting Delaney up there, but yeah. Delaney was awesome. What a sweetheart that little lady is. And Heather, yes, she's, yeah, amazing. So, yeah. You're just saying that because I fed you guys. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, my, 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 uh, my guy friends can't cook this good. So, you know, I'm, I'm... <laughs> she's welcome all the time. <laughs> <laughs> So no, no, it was amazing. It was amazing. Uh, I just, it was, yeah, it, like, I'm going to go back on this again. It, we're just like a family. It, it was yeah. awesome. It means so much to me. I, I had a long, you know, six hour drive home and that's all I thought about is just the camaraderie, the mm-hmm. you guys and everybody together. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was, it was special. You know, I, mean, okay. I got to go down to Texas. I got to see this, you know, him and, you know, and do that. And that was, that was a ball. I've never done that before. You know, go out to shoot. You know, pheasants on Colorado. I didn't think there was pheasants in Colorado, to tell you the truth. I just no. had to go see if there was. You know, and then this, I mean, I just love I love how we can do this together. That's the fun yeah. part. So and we when just I... got all excited about what everyone else was able to accomplish. Like, and I know you'll probably talk about it when you uh meet with Tyler, but like that shot that he put oh. up and dropped two birds and we got, we got it on got to about we... Tyler's double. It was yeah. unbelievable. And we were like screaming. We were so excited for him. It was absolutely epic. And so that feeling of just being so excited. I don't, I mean, I don't even know if I put a bird on the ground. I didn't care. It was, we were all excited for when a bird went on the ground. It didn't matter who shot it. Yeah. No, it was, it was funny. This is how it went in. So we had, we had a three pack come down, four pack. I guess I don't remember. And then I'm shooting at the, the, the right bird. And then I got, Tyler, Tyler next to me, and then I'm shooting at this thing, and all of a sudden I see two birds drop out of my out of my peripheral vision, and he just lights up. I got two. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Oh, good for him. It was a great experience. I loved having him there too. Yeah, and Delaney, don't forget about Delaney too. Yeah, she was yeah. sweet. Delaney was yeah, absolutely fantastic. Perfect. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Perfect for the group. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I go back to I go back to Tim's farm when we were on the pheasant hunt. And geez, I got home and you know, like I said, I went to Heather first. Said you got to meet these people in person. Well, the next person I contact was Sam and say, 
how do we meet everybody in person? <laughs> you know, I was even coming up with ideas of, I know Andy's from Minnesota, Michigan's playing Minnesota. Maybe we'll go up there for a football game and, you know, oh, just, you just, <laughs> oh, you betcha. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> you, betcha. <laughs> you betcha. You betcha. I don't got an accent. Hey, you guys nope. want to go on the boat? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's perfect. You know, we, we, uh, as you've emphasized, as all of y'all have talked about multiple times, you know, just the, the camaraderie and being able to get folks together. And, you know, we, we've had, we, it seems like we got more opportunities coming and coming and, um, you, you know, to, to follow up on that, you know, what you're talking about, Todd, with c- coming back from that pheasant hunt, you know, that's your phone call to me. You've referenced that a few times now that, that really sparked some stuff in my mind and got the, it, it was a slow process on some of it, but it got the ball rolling on, on some other stuff. One of them is, is the role that you filled, you know, as of now, as our, as our, one of our staff coordinators, um, and and you know you've you've done a lot of work and obviously with this hunt trying to put stuff like this together and and that's that's the idea behind not only your role but what we want to what we want to do for our staffers you know in in getting people together and providing more opportunities you know we we saw we saw that we want to do that from the texas hunt the pheasant hunt even though it was a smaller group reaffirmed that and then i'm i'm super pumped to to have seen this event come together and you guys get together because, Ooh. um, you know, like I told y'all before we start recording, I've, I've seen the videos and the photos. And obviously if you guys are listeners, follow us on social media, you've seen frequent posts for the past couple of weeks about this stuff. And it's probably not going to stop anytime soon. If I'm being honest, <laughs> there's a lot of content there for sure. And it was a good time, but My bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that there's also a lot of content. Our listeners and our viewers aren't going to see. So, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I just want to comment on uh, how how well Todd is doing uh, with this. It, it may, amazing. I mean, if it wasn't for him, we would do this. So I do have to be, say a big thanks to Todd and taking the bull yeah. by the horns and doing this. I mean, really, I mean, thank you for this. I appreciate it. Yeah, so no problem. It was a blast. It, like I said, my You're vision good. came to thank you came to fruition, and that's kind of the way the weekend went was exactly how I envisioned it, and. Well, I shouldn't say that. I envisioned us each getting a bird, <laughs> and we got more than one bird. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and there, there's. I, I didn't expect us to have so much fun and have so much, um, so much fun in terms of having it captured on footage. Because I go back and I look at that blooper reel, and oh my gosh, I can't stop laughing. And so <laughs> there are times I pull it up in class and I start watching it. And oh, you, the first time I watched it, I was laughing so hard I was crying. And my kids are like. Are you okay, Mr. Todd? <laughs> <laughs> just it's just us. Don't worry. <laughs> but, you know, I, I didn't I didn't I didn't going into this, I didn't realize that it would have as much fun to start crying when I'm watching this. And like Andy said, he's he he's he thought about the whole six six hour drive. Heather and I talk about it every day. And I think <laughs> you know, it's been a couple of weeks now and I think about it every day. Geez, when can we get back together again? You know, and and you know our next little excursion that we have so far is the 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 bow fishing trip. And man, I am so looking forward to getting down there and just hanging out with some people. And Heck yeah, it's so much fun, you know. And I and I also look back at the hunt. Like I said, originally it was scheduled for uh, February of twenty one. And um, Andy Andy couldn't commit at that time because it was such short notice. And um, I look back and say, you know, maybe it worked out for the best because without without Andy, oh my gosh. We learned so much from Andy, so much. And, you know, he's just a great teacher and is very patient with all of us and, and helped us understand what we needed to do. So, um, you know, and, and, and Tyler's hunted goose before too. So he and Tyler together made it, made a good, good pair to, to really teach those that, that haven't had experience. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. Tyler, Tyler was there right with me. Yeah. yeah. Got some credit to Tyler too. So yeah. yeah. yeah for sure. Well, I, I know we'll, Obviously, like I mentioned, we'll get Tyler and Delaney on here for for next week's podcast, part two of this conversation. I, I know there will be some similarities with this one, I'm sure, but um, to to speak with the group that I have here now, and 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 you, Andy, you know, it, it, it's kind of funny because you know, Todd, you talk about you know thinking about it all the time, recalling that that never goes away, man. Like it never goes away. 
Andy, I, I swear, every time you send in some content to Fall Obsession, <laughs> Nick and I look at it, and one of us says to the other, hey, you remember down in Texas when, when Andy said this or Andy did that, and we just start laughing and stuff, man? Like, I mean, we, we you never forget it, man. It's, it's just hey, this hey, this stuff hey, lives with you forever. Man. I'm here because I love you guys. I really <laughs> <laughs> no, I, no, I love it. That's great. Yeah. And really, really, you know, years ago, I can't remember when I first contacted you, Sam, about um, becoming a part of Fall Obsession. Uh, even that, I was just trying to find a, a group of people that I could c connect with and share my passion of the outdoors and hunting. And, you know, I've certainly found that within Fall Obsession. And I'm hoping the people that watch this really get a sense of, A, uh, how much fun snow goose hunting is. If they've never tried it, they got to try it, you know. Um, and B, the types of relationships you can build with groups of people that are from all over. You know, Andy's from Minnesota, Tyler was from Kansas, Delaney from Indiana, um, you know, Drew also from Minnesota, Tim went on a hunt from Colorado. Just you come together as a group and it doesn't matter what your background is, it doesn't matter where, you, where you're from, you just connect at a totally different level. And that's kind of, that was my hope when I when I contacted you, Sam, about becoming yeah. part of Fall Obsession. And like I said, it's all it's all worked out. It's, it's yeah. so much fun. I, I said it early on in this podcast, and and I'll I'll reemphasize it, you know, and 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 it's credit to you guys because it it doesn't happen without y'all. But you know, it, it it's a family, it's a brother and sisterhood. This is absolutely it, it, it's it's our own our own family, you know, and and that's that's the way it's meant to be. It's we're uh, I I don't want to downgrade it or make it sound less than it is, but you know, we're an online company. This is an online hunting camp, is what our group is, you know, and yeah. and. For we're fortunate to have opportunities like this to actually make it a true real hunting camp and and when it when it is that it's just yeah uh, y'all y'all know it just as well as i do how how special it is hey, hey so. remember boss man hey remember boss man we're not here we're all here because of you so man yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't you're yeah. you're uh, we're all here you no no i'm 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 gonna i'm i'm staying humble here andy come on man <laughs> <laughs> he's trying he's he's gonna, he'll get himself anchored to the floor <laughs> yeah you're gonna make me blush so over here man. On, and we're we're very, we're all very happy to be a part of with what you do and be right next to you doing what you, we love to do so well i i appreciate it man i appreciate all y'all and awesome. and all the hard work you each put into this for sure it's it's uh yeah. you know it's we do too it, it's a lot of work on on all sides of this and I, I look forward and and have big hopes and and ambitions for where this where this company where where these people are going with this thing uh, I look forward to seeing what months and years to come have in store um, but you know we're we're all going together you know and I look forward to it so absolutely perfect so anything else that we need to know about this hunt about this experience? Anything else you guys want to share before we head for home base here? I think I think one of the cool things too that kind of um, happened with this is talking about how we get some of our because you know we have two young kids, Andy's got um, two young kids, and how we continue. Yep, there's one, one right the there. Yeah. The <laughs> <too>. <laughs> um, how we continue, especially having young girls. How do we continue to incorporate them into you know the hunting world and um incorporate some of these trips into more you know almost family vacations in some ways mm -hmm. too because mm -hmm. we don't want to be separated from our kids and, and it, well <laughs> yeah there's some days now i'm not gonna lie I know, I but, know. <laughs> but to be able to raise young females and young males who are excited about hunting, who are excited about conservation, who are, <laughs> look at you, and yeah. to be able to, to bring them along on some of these hunts. Um, and I think it's a really cool conversation that came up several times when we were there. Mm -hmm. You know, I know for me, um, I don't get to go out and hunt <laughs> as much. I have a lot of things that I have a lot of responsibilities. I do not get to normally just drop everything and go hunt or jump on a plane and go somewhere. And so be able to tell my story as a mom doing this and as a wife and as, um, and so that other females who are out there get to see that side, like, no, it's okay. I took like five years off of hunting. COVID really got me back into it. Pheasant hunting really got me back into it and that's okay. You know, this should be fun. It should be exciting. And whatever your story is, however unique it is 
just own it, enjoy it, and and don't be afraid to share it. And I think that's, you know, the stories that we share. You know, as an English teacher, I'm always telling the kids, people are going to remember the stories you tell. They're not going to remember the facts. They're not going to remember the statistics. They remember your story. Um, so I just love the follow up session stories. Um, the zebra story that came up. I mean, that was fantastic. I had zebra story. Yeah, zebra story. Yeah, your zebra story. Oh, your story. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about you, man. Yeah, <laughs> we're holding the banana, you know. Being that able good to... luck. That's good luck. <laughs> <laughs> but being able, like, wait a minute, I must have missed that that video. And so we were like, one Saturday morning, we were going through mm -hmm. watching just tons of video, and yeah. I think we rewatched that one like five or six times. Yeah. It was fantastic. Man, so that that's a to that's a rabbit trail off of snow goose hunting, obviously, but at, at this point I feel like I gotta talk about it on this episode. You know, if anybody's <laughs> not familiar and it, it's just a good story. But I'll, I'll tell it from I'll tell it from my perspective. Andy obviously yes. has the first hand perspective. <laughs> so that is the first morning of our of that Texas staff hunt, the first true staff hunt that we had. And it was pouring rain that first morning and i spent the morning running some guys around to different blinds and stuff but i was like man i'm i'm actually not gonna hunt this morning like i'm gonna get these people where they want to be and then i'm gonna just come back to the lodge and make sure everything's set up first morning for breakfast and stuff like that so there, there's plenty of time to kill you know after you get everybody dropped off and it gets daylight and i'm sitting on the front porch with our our business manager nick latham and him and I, we hadn't seen each other. We both live in Texas. And at the time, we hadn't even seen each other in a long time. So we, we're just catching up, you know, hanging out, drinking coffee. And uh, I get a text from Drew. And he's like, hey, are there exotics on this property? And I was like, well, honestly, I mean, Chris and Matt didn't really say a whole lot about it. But, I mean, this, this is a huge property. And I imagine there's, there's some out here. You know, why? Mm -hmm. He goes, I just said a zebra walk in front of me and i'm like <laughs> really a, a freaking zebra and he's like yeah andy and i just had a zebra walk right in front of us and i was like there there's no way there there's no way and i can only imagine two boys from minnesota who have yeah, never hunted yeah, texas yeah. before sitting in a ground blind <laughs> and had no idea that, that like they were just gonna be excited to see deer hey, andy andy you take it man tell tell us oh, about it no oh. So we're sitting there, and you know, this the uh, the uh, uh, cow came through. It kind of had some cool horns. It, one had a little drop kind of drop tine tine kind of thing, and we're sitting there kind of joking around, da da. And the one thing walks back, and all of a sudden, I'm eating a banana. And I look back and went, "Oh my!" No, I just I mean, absolutely incredible. It blew my mind. I've, I haven't been that close to a zebra, not even at a zoo. <laughs> it blew my mind, like you said. He said, "Sam, two boys from Minnesota." I mean. Seriously, never would, yeah. And Drew's sitting there laughing at me because, yeah. Man, it, it's yeah. it's the best frame grab I think we've ever had on oh. on our on any of our content. And I I, I know fantastic. I know Drew and I talked about it in our content creator podcast episode. I'm gonna put it on the screen again right now in the podcast video for this one. That way our, our viewers can see. It's just it, it's too good not to share, man. It's too good. Gotta, gotta make a fat head for Andy. Blew my mind. <laughs> I have to I mean, put that on a T-shirt. Right, yeah. exactly. I mean, Chris, Chris told us they were what uh, black tail or some what Sitka back in the what, the back forty. Uh, he, I think he mentioned like Axis and some black yeah, buck on the place, yeah, Axis, but that's yeah, all. Yeah. And so I was saying, okay, so yeah, the Axis deer are out there. I'm just gonna see white tail, maybe some quail, you know, part you know, mm -hmm. maybe some cows. Never a zebra. Never a zebra. <laughs> how how far away from the blind was it? It looks close no, in the video. No, no, literally, I three yards. If wow. five yards at the max. I'm seriously. It was, I mean, stupid close. I, <laughs> that's why it blew my mind. I, mean, I could smell it. I mean, I could smell it. <laughs> but again, an experience you won't forget. Absolutely not. No, absolutely not. And that's and that's why I love these these what we do because we get to go do these things and I have these memories and we talk about it to this day. I mean, this is yeah. It's a, yeah, for sure. It's it's amazing thing. So, well, guys, I could sit here and talk with this group. I feel like 
I feel like forever. Todd, you got a great group out here in the in the Midwest region of our fall session staff. I know it's it's already grown a little bit, you know, since we've been since we've been doing this. I hope we keep seeing it grow. I hope that hunts like this keep happening. I hope we get more of a turnout from the, the snow goose hunt. I, 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 for all I know, I might have to be jockeying for a spot next year. Everybody hears about the good time it is. Everybody's going to want in on it. I'm going to so. tie you up, bring you up. Don't worry. <laughs> all right. Andy said he's bringing me, so I, I, I got an in. All right. I'm good. There you go. Okay. Yeah, we've already planned. And, and really when we, uh, the thing that stuck out to me most with uh, Squaw Creek um, Hunt Club there was it was centrally located. I yeah. mean, it, yep. was, it was perfectly mm-hmm. located for all of us within the group, the Midwest group there. So, mm-hmm. you know, we weren't driving all the way across, the, you know, the country to, to go on a hunt. It was, it was just a, a, a perfect location. Uh, Scott, the owner, and, and Joe, our guide, you know, went way above and beyond to make us feel comfortable. Felt like we were just at home. We could have any conversation. Like I said, Joe walked into, I'm sure, an impro- inappropriate conversation, and he felt like he was at home, and so he responded. And we, this, guy is <laughs> this guy's cool, yeah. Todd, uh, we never had inappropriate conversation. <laughs> <laughs> no, never. <laughs> no, and, and I do it to say um, – I've snow goose, snow goose for eight years. I've been around guides and stuff like that. And Squaw Creek does a heck of a job. They do know their stuff. Um, if anybody's looking for that place, yes. Um, good place to go. And our accommodations, our lodging accommodations was amazing. I mean, yeah. I mean, I could have lived in that house. I, yeah, for sure. Awesome. So, for sure. Yeah, we walked in and we we're like, is this the house we get to stay in? This I go, Todd, are we? what we were expecting. <laughs> <laughs> we were like, this is awesome. Yeah. I don't think they want dirty construction work or uh, hunters in here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, guys, uh, awesome talking to y'all this evening about, like I said, I feel like we could just keep talking forever, but, um, sure. at, at, at some point, you know, you gotta, you gotta wrap up and head for home. And, and li- like yeah. I said, we're, this is only part one, you know, next, sure. next week on our podcast, we're going to have yeah. Delaney and Tyler with us for, and, and Todd will be back again, um, for, for part two to get their side of everything um they can make fun of andy without him being present you know so hey, whatever I'm, the thing he says don't believe everything <laughs> i don't believe everything all right <laughs> well uh, we'll we'll start the episode off we'll we'll make sure everybody's well aware hey don't don't uh be, be careful what you hear on, on this one we'll we'll start off with we'll start off with hey delaney andy said <laughs> Oh, you betcha! And she the whole oh, thing. Oh. <laughs> Perfect. I'll 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 write it down. I'll I'll make a note of it for sure. So you have, you have, uh, Sam, you have some amazing people on your staff, and I just want to say thank you for being doing this for us. So it's my it's my pleasure, man. I I love doing it. I love uh I love seeing these groups come together and all all this transpire. Like I said, it I I can't take credit for it. It, it it's all no. y'all, but. It, it it's awesome to see and and I'm I'm glad we're doing this so and and Todd, and Todd always thank you very much for team leader I really appreciate it so no problem thank you for helping us learn I hate no learn about snow geese yeah. together man if anybody wants to learn about snow geese they get a contact you should throw your uh, your Twitter or your email up there and the- it's going in two weeks anybody want to come with me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going south for spring break. We've already talked about this. I go north. Sorry, I go Heather, south. I'm sorry, that, that was legit. Them. That's fine. <laughs> that was a legit discussion, Sam. Too in the blind, Andy. I'm gonna be up in South Dakota. I'm like, ooh, spring break. So I, in my mind, I'm trying to figure out how can I go up to South Dakota and make it back down to Gulf Shore. <laughs> <laughs> just just swing through on your way down. You yeah, know, it's just a little. Yeah, just yeah. just a little detour. No, not not far. You know what? It makes sense. I can sell your final four tickets. Oh. I'll sell yours. Um, go ahead, go, and I'm <laughs> keeping the money. Sell <laughs> two, two of them. I mean, crepes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. All right, guys. Well, for our listeners, we appreciate you guys tuning in to another Fall Obsession podcast episode. If you guys have not already, be sure that you like, follow, subscribe on whatever podcast platform you're listening on. Leave us a review. We're on all the major podcast platforms as well as our website, fallobsession.com, and our YouTube channel. We got multiple new videos uh, coming out every week on our YouTube channel right now, trying to keep that content rolling. There will be a video. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I got 
got to talk to Nick and see when it's going to fall in relation to this episode. But sometime in the near future, around the time this episode comes out, the footage from this hunt, he's putting it together and working on that. So excited to see that coming. This podcast is also one of our video podcasts. So two, three days after we drop the the audio, um, the video will be live on YouTube. So you guys can go uh, see these lovely faces and uh, and how hard Andy's laughing throughout this entire episode. <laughs> so always cracks me up. Oh, I'm just a goofball. <laughs> <laughs> but you're, but Andy, you're such a glue, you know. Oh yeah, wouldn't be the same right? without you, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah it yeah. is not the same. And as kudos, I, I mean, it. you're giving kudos to everyone else, but it's a huge kudo to you as well of just how inviting you are and how friendly you are and accepting of everyone you are. So thank you for that as well. Mm-hmm. Thank, oh, thank you, appreciate it. Yeah, that's this, this is who I am. This is. <laughs> hey man, our our ratings for this episode are going to go way up just because I you're on so. it. So. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah. man! Put your makeup on, and yeah. <laughs> we'll tell Nikki say hi. Yeah, for sure. Nick, Nick actually, he he wanted to be on this podcast. He was going to try to make it, but he had some other. He it was going to be close, and it didn't work out. So he he's gotcha. he was. Uh, we just got to get you, Andy. We got to get you, me, and Nick together for an episode at some point again too. That oh, yeah. that'll be a fun time. But oh, yeah. well, hey. make sure make sure you tell him to keep the stick up, guys, and you know. <laughs> Sorry, it's a bit- yeah you guys understand that yeah yeah well i'll let them know (laughs) uh fallobsession.com that is our website that's the hub that's where you guys can find all of our great content educational articles wild game recipes our video series we have our apparel uh on there we got some spring designs that we are finally in the finalizing stages on on those about to have them hit our stores looking forward to having that happen as well as a, a hat design restock so a lot of a lot of good stuff finally coming that we've been uh waiting on for a while um, fallobsession.com slash podcast that's not only where you guys can listen to our podcast on our website but it's also where you guys can provide feedback there's a form on there you guys can fill out and on that note we're coming up very quickly now at this point on episode 100 this is episode 97 i think um so episode 100 is going to be the four fall obsession admins sitting down kind of talking about how we got to where we are and uh, kind of what's special about everything we're doing i'm sure this event will even come up in that conversation guys as as special and significant as it's been Um, but another thing we're doing we're allowing our listeners to be a part of that episode 100 conversation so if you guys have any general feedback questions um, topic suggestions you want us to briefly talk about or mention plug whatever it might be we will do it in that podcast podcast episode i can't even talk now i'm i'm been laughing so hard but um we'll talk about it in that podcast episode um here in a few weeks so be sure you go to the website and fill out that form again fallobsession.com slash podcast Finally, the last thing I'll say, Ridge Rock Hunt Company, they are our podcast partner, Derek and Lacey over there in Mississippi. Good people. They book hunts with vetted outfitters who are hunted by blue-collar outdoorsmen like all of us. So um, if you if you want a good experience, obviously we got a plug for a snow goose outfitter in Missouri, but if you're looking yeah. for whitetail, mule deer, elk, anything uh, across north america and outside of north america give derek a call over there and he will hook you up he's one of those guys that as soon as you get on the phone with them it's 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 like all these folks you feel like you've known him forever so um he'll take good care of you we we vouch for him for sure obviously and we're actually trying to get them back on the podcast here pretty soon too so looking forward to that so ridge rock hunt company go check them out todd heather andy Thank you guys for joining me this week. It's been a fun time. We're we're gonna have to get all y'all back on here again. It's it's yeah, a good time. Absolutely, you betcha. Absolutely. So. You betcha. Oh, you betcha. <laughs> let's hear it. Let's hear it, Andy. Oh, you betcha. Come on. Oh, you betcha. There we go. All right. That's it. Good That's way to. It. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, Todd. You got something from your guys. Yeah. Stay obsessed. Stay obsessed. Stay obsessed. All right, guys. Stay obsessed. We'll catch you all again next week for part two of our Midwestern High podcast episode. We'll see you all then.